Jake Lehman is one of the guys mm -hmm. who's also in that mix to start at the three. Yeah. Um, what does he give you on the floor instead of Graham, pro and con? And also, uh, you seem to be pairing a lot with Okogi last couple games. Mm -hmm. Why are they a good mix? Yeah. Uh, so to answer your first question, um, you know, I think both guys give give more pros than cons. So I mean, I'd, I'd probably stay away. I, it's just who fits better. Um, one thing about Jake that that we you know know, knew from his time in Portland, um, you know, go, playing against him is that he's he can attack the rim. Uh, we like that. We like that he's able to get his shot off quick too. Um, you know, we ran a number of catch and shoot plays for him. Uh, you know, and he's comfortable in those situations. Um, you know, with, with Trevion, they both play hard, they both compete, um, and they're both about the right things. So, you know, it's, you know, I'd say they're not the only guys that, that we're looking at um, in terms of, you know, within, the, within that lineup, within that group. Uh, but then when you, when you talk about, you know, Jake playing with Josh, um, I think they, they both work well with each other. And then I think we, we play Josh with Trevion some too. And those calm, Josh plays so hard at such a, a full speed. Um, they having a couple, you know, quote unquote, veteran guys that play really hard, um, but play really uh, under control with with the how hard they play. Um, I think that just helps Josh out there, and that raises him uh, his level of play. Chris, how has Shabazz kind of led the the offense the way you, maybe you've wanted him to, and how is how is he kind of molded into that? That yeah, I mean, position. he's yeah, yeah. He's uh, he has a he has a way about about him, and I've said it before. Um, you know, I liked him coming out of college just because he has he has a grit about him um, that you can trust. And as a coach, uh, you like that a point guard's gonna gonna talk with you while you know because he's he's ultimately seeing everything on the court. He's seeing how the defense is playing him. Um, I like that about him. I like his leadership qualities. And then you know when. When you jump jump him for not getting us into something, or you know being disorganized, I mean he's he's very coachable, and you know he was he was sending me long texts late last night just on things like hey we can we can get into this we can do that, and you know that's the stuff I, I love out of point guards. Um, so he he's very uh, he takes it upon himself. You let the starters kind of play most of the first quarter, if not all of the first quarter. When it comes to how long shifts are going to be with how fast you mm -hmm. want to play are you trying to find maybe what what works for guys and how their conditioning is yeah, right now yeah exactly and that was that was my uh, intention um for that in the, in the first quarter and uh you know we, we want to see like you said you know we're, we're looking to play faster and uh with that we understand that conditioning needs to be at a, at a high level so we want to see what guys kind of what their numbers read and what they max out with go ahead kent uh, with with Cov, um, you know, he talked at, on media day about how he felt 100, percent but he kind of felt like he needed to ease himself mm -hmm. in. Where, where do you think he's at, just purely physically, and do you see any rust on his game at all? You know, when when you're out for a significant period of time, like he was, uh, it, it will take a little bit of time to to be fully comfortable. But I think tonight was a, a great step for him in terms of you know where he was. Uh, you know how he was moving. Um, you know how he was able to get get his shot off and the rhythm he had. Uh, so I think tonight was was a good step, and I, I know he'll continue to progress. Dane, you've you've talked about wanting to play offensively the way you've been playing, kind of regardless of who the opponent mm -hmm. is. Is is the defense a little bit more like schematically how how you're going to handle it opponent to opponent, just kind of. The way you you guarded them tonight was a little bit differently, a little bit different. A, a little bit, um, but for the most part, I mean, we you know we we had talked before about possibly tinkering with some things, seeing seeing what works um, at this point in the preseason. Uh, for the most part, we want to be a team of standards and hold ourselves you know to those standards when we when we really feel we get to that point in terms of knowing what is the is what the best coverage for us is in, in situations. And guys are learning that. Um, so we, we didn't change a whole lot. We changed a little bit. Um, but some of them, you know, quote unquote, became emergency switches for us to an off ball situations. Um, but we want to be a team of standards. Any other questions? Katie? Katie Davidson, a wolf among wolves. <clears throat> For a player like Josh, how do you get him to play more under control without lessening how much he yeah. gives? 
No, that's a good question because ultimately that's playing hard is a skill in the NBA. And um, Josh has that, and he, he has that at an elite level. So you want him to feel like he can play um, – play free and he can he can you know get out in the open court he can make plays defensively uh, but you also you know you want to make sure and, and it comes with growth it comes with um, maturity in terms of your your years in the league as well as you know what you see in the league and he he'll get better and better in terms of knowing when you know to not for for instance gamble for for a steal and put himself out of position we want we say solid is enough um that's that's what we want to want to be defensively being solid is enough and uh you know so we don't want we don't want to have to pull him back but we just want him to to understand when those times are and he's he's doing a great job he's one of the most coachable players i've ever been around